This is now part two. We're going to be talking about electromagnets. So just a quick recap to remember to, to make sure that this is going to work. Two rules for field lines. Field lines always travel from north to south, and they can never cross each other. If you remember that, this next section should be fairly easy. So we know that this is the field line, the field pattern around a bar magnet. We'll do an experiment um, where I show you how to actually find these field lines, um, but you should be fairly familiar with them. Now, one of the things that we discover is that if we can examine the field lines, we actually find field lines around single wires. The mechanism of why that happens is super weird, um, and you really need loads and loads of maths to explain it. So I'm not going to explain in this video why it happens. All you have to know is that there is a magnetic field around all wires. Now, if you go on to A-level, you'll see that we actually design a lot of circuits to avoid these magnetic fields um, coming out. So what we'd often do, for example, if I have one wire going like this with a magnetic field around it, I might put a different wire with a current going in the opposite direction, um, and that will those two fields will then cancel each other out. So there's so you don't often notice this, even if there is a, a a field around a wire around one single bit of wire, the field is always very very weak. So you wouldn't normally notice this in everyday life. Um, however, as you can see, in this case, I have current going up towards the top of the page, um, and the field lines go around it like they have been drawn. So the first rule we're going to come to is called the right hand grip rule. And the right hand grip rule is really really simple. If you get your pencil, make sure that your pencil is pointing in the direction that current is going. This is really important. We use current, not electrons. So remember that current runs from positive to negative. Even though we know that what's really happening is electrons are going from negative to positive, because of all the rules and all the way that things were, were written hundreds of years ago, we still say that the current itself is going from positive to negative. It's this imaginary thing. So you point your pen in the direction that the current's going, and you grab it with your right hand, right hand grip rule. And then you have your thumb pointing in the direction of the current, like that. But what we can now say is that the direction that your fingers curve round in is the direction of the magnetic field. So this type of field is called a circular field, because it goes around. It's a circle. Um, what we're going to see <clears throat> is we often want to talk about, well, here's a wire, and I've got current going from the, the outside into the screen. So how do I do that? What we do is we imagine a dart. So if you've ever played darts, you know that it's got a pointy end and it's got a fletching or um, feathers at the back or a flight. So what we do is if I want to do something going out of the page, if you imagine I throw a dart at you, what will you see? Coming towards you, you will see the point. So I, if I want to draw a current coming out of my page, I do a wire and I put a dot in it. If you throw a dart at me, you will see a, the cross on the back as it leaves. So if I want to draw a wire coming out of the page, I would draw it like that. I draw a cross. So um, for this one here, this one is going into the page. For this one here it's coming out of. So, for the first one, for the into the page, which way will the field go? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, it's pretty simple. Again, you point your pen so that the pen nib is pointing in the direction, in this case, into the page, and you grab it with your thumb pointing towards the pen nib. So I can see that my fingers are curving around this way, um, it may be backwards for you because of the camera. I'll check this when I edit it. If I forget, I do apologise. Just follow at home. Um, so I can see, though, that if you're following at home well, my magnetic field is going to go around like that. Always make sure that you put the arrows top and bottom because what sometimes people do is they do all the arrows facing that way rather than the top ones going that way and the bottom ones going the other way. Um, so be really careful to do top and bottom. For what's coming out of the page, well now I need my pen nib to be pointing towards me 
and my thumb to be coming out the page. I can see my fingers curl the other way around. So for this one, it's going to look like that. Yeah, it's curving in the opposite direction. Um, now I could do something quite cool here. If I look at this bit, I've got fields going one way and fields going the other way. So what I have are opposite fields. Um, so what does that mean? Well, it means that these two fields um, will attract each other. So these two wires will pull each other together, which is pretty cool. Okay, so how is it then that we can make an electromagnet? So what an electromagnet is, is we take a power supply and we pass it so that it goes, I've done this the wrong way around, so that it goes through a coil of wire, like that, and then back. So I wrap it around a bunch of times. So what that means, if you imagine that the current is coming out that way, and it's coming out of the page then, and it's looping back and going into the page there. Um, so I've actually drawn this the wrong way around. Let me erase it all and start again. Uh, we want to do it that way, don't we? This is really badly drawing, but don't worry, I will give you a, a proper version in a second. Um, yes, so now it's coming out that way, going in that way. Coming out that way, going in that way. Um, so what I'm saying is that these are the wires. Um, and if you imagine that I've just sliced through the middle of it, that's where the wires will be. So, what will that do to the magnetic fields? Well, on the top row here, it's coming out of the page. So, right hand grip rule, you want your thumb pointing towards you or pointing out of the page, and you can see your fingers curl around that way. Always remember to use your right hand rule. So, each of these will have a magnetic field that looks like that. Don't get this wrong. Uh, it's really easy. So do actually stop, hold your thumb out, look at your hand, and make sure that you're drawing this correctly because it's it's really, really easy to make a little mistake here. You kind of get swept up in the symmetry of it um, and it makes you want to draw things in the wrong way. For the other ones, um, they're going to be going in the opposite direction. So they're going to be going like that. Um, and in this case, just for, to make it really avoiding any uh, mistakes, I'm actually drawing these arrows all the way around to make sure I don't get it wrong. Now, if you remember our magnetic field line rules, we said that they can never cross. So what will happen is here, where the two are in opposite directions, they'll actually attract each other a little bit, or you can kind of imagine them as cancelling out, so it's not like they're not going to be there. These ones here, these are reinforcing each other. So what we get is lots of field lines going through the centre here, and none at all coming out this way. So if I make that neater, oh, let's just erase my drawing, it actually looks like this. Take a second to really look at this diagram um, and just be sure in your head that you can see where it's coming from. We have these lots of extra components all adding up to make uh, one bar, one kind of, um, the kind of field that you see around a bar magnet. It's pretty cool. Um, there's an even neater version of it just so you can see. Now, if you had to sit down and work that out every single time, it's going to get really, really confusing for you. So, there's another rule that you can use. You can use the right-hand grip rule again. So, before, we were saying that if I have a single wire with current going like that, the right-hand grip rule says your thumb points in the direction of the current, and your fingers tell you the way that the current is going. So, in this case, it's going like that. Sorry, the magnetic field is going... The right-hand grip rule can also be used on a coil. If you use it on a coil, then what you do is you say that your fingers now are showing the direction of current around the coil, like this person is. Then your thumb will show you the direction of the field. So your thumb will point in the north end. It was the same hand, and it's the same idea. Yeah? If you know what's doing the turning, 
your thumb will point either to north or in the direction of current. Yeah? If you know the direction of north or the direction of current, then you can use it that way. So you use your thumb as the current for a wire. You use your fingers as the current for a coil. I'll just write this down here. So for a coil, your fingers are current. For a wire, your thumb is the current. Okay, and in both cases, for the coil, if your fingers are the current, your thumb is the, the north, the points north. Um, with a wire, if your thumb is the current, your fingers point in the direction that the field is going. <clears throat> so how can we adjust the field strength as electromagnet? It's really simple. If I have more coils, if you look back to this diagram, if I have more coils, if I add on extras here and here and here, um, so I put more loops in, you might see um, them as well as being coils, they might be called turns because they turn around the magnet each time. Um, if I have more of those, then those fields are going to overlap even more, and they're going to be stronger. If I put more current in, then the fields get stronger as well. Each of those individual coils uh, fields get stronger, so I get a bigger field. Um, and if I put an iron core in the middle, then what will happen is, this would be my iron core here before when the current is off. When the current is on, the wires generate a magnetic field, but the core magnifies that and makes it even stronger because the core's domains then add up or line up, and then the core um, will create an even stronger field. <clears throat>